Ooh. Shh. Where'd it go? Filming. <laughs> 14 gallon peninsula tank update. All good things. All good things, which is somewhat miraculous. The two clownfish look gorgeous in this tank, and they're not fighting very much. They're getting along. They're kind of exploring all over the tank. They've gone underneath the caves. Anyway, they're doing well. I don't have any complaints about them. They look awesome. Last week, I tried moving a few different kinds of corals in there, but this return pump right up here is actually really powerful, and I have it all the way on low, and because I don't have a sand bed probably, but it the water goes like this. It goes here, and then it whips down, so the current right here in the front is actually pretty high, so I thought I could put a mushroom up there, but it was way too much flow for the mushroom, so I ended up taking everything out except for the toadstool and then the zoa garden, and that seems to be going okay. I'm not gonna add any more corals this week. I'm gonna let the tank settle in a little bit more, but we'll add some next week. This tank is totally cycled, 100%. Ammonia zero and nitrate and phosphates are actually at zero. So I'm actually I'm just feeding some mysis twice a day and I'm hoping to get a little bit more nitrates and phosphates. I mean, I don't think it's actually at zero because there's a little bit of nuisance algae growth, but not very much. I haven't added a cleanup crew either yet because there doesn't seem to be a need, but I've actually also started dosing AB plus the red CAB plus primarily because why you know why not it's good for the corals and number two it will help increase those nutrient levels a little bit which isn't a bad thing right now and then the zoa rock I mean look at it it's, it's looking pretty good actually so many cool colors in there they all seem really happy I'm just hoping that within a couple months the least kind of grow over those frag plugs so that I won't have to stare at them, kind of the ugly frag plugs. But if you look really close, I've noticed two problems, and I think I can only show you one, but check out this video right here. Look at that. Do you guys do you guys see what that is? That is Aptasia. And there are two Aptasias in here. Aptasia, Aptasia. There are two Aptasia in here. And I want to get rid of them before they spread everywhere. And I think I actually have something that was sent to me accidentally. I got this box from Marine Depot like six months ago. And inside of it was this random piece of gear that I didn't order and that didn't and that Marine Depot didn't tell me about. So I don't know if they meant to send it to me or not. But thanks, Marine Depot, for sending it. Found it. I think I found it. Have you guys ever used this? The Mohana wand? Is that how you say it? Mohana wand. Aptasia wand. I've never used this thing. I know it uses, like, electricity. Let's go inside and read the instructions real quick so we don't hurt anybody and see if we can get rid of the Aptasia this way. I've seen people use it online, but I don't know. It makes me nervous. Here we go. Ring. I don't think it's anything fancy. Oh, dear. Okay, what do we got? Looks like it has a button. Mohana wand. Okay, so this button pushes in. So this must be what you use to shock it. And then I think it just uses electricity, right? I can pull this off. Ooh, look at that. Oh my gosh. So I think you just shock it. Obviously I'm gonna read the instructions, but I think this seems really, really easy actually. Just basically have to take the tip and touch it. It's gonna kill whatever it touches and then press the button while we touch it. But I mean, I can't imagine this is gonna take longer than what, 30 seconds per each one. Okay, I can see it there. Can you guys see it? There's one here, right? here next to this Zoa, but I think it'd be way easier if I'm able to turn this rock around. Oh no, I lost it, where'd it go? Oh, there it is, okay. Here, let me, let me zoom in real quick, let me zoom in real quick. Okay, do you see it? You see it? Right there. So I'm gonna try to kill it without destroying the other Zoas, so I think this might be tricky. <laughs> okay, let's try it, let's try it. Oh there, ooh, see that? might destroy, I might end up destroying a polyp or two, but I think it's gonna be okay at the end of the day. Okay, there's the second one, you see it? Let's see if we can get this one. Number two, you're mine. I mean, I think that's it, I think that's as easy. Now, now whether or not I got it all, we'll have to wait and see, but man, that is so much, that's so, e so easy. Let's just hope, hope these recover. I'll show you guys a, a clip of the Zoas that are affected here shortly. That way you can see if the Zoas open back up and look okay or not. So I was just sitting over here, just finished filming for the week. I was admiring the Zoa garden and then I freaking look over here. Can you see it? Can you see it there? You see what I'm looking at right in the middle? Hey, look over here. See this one? You see it there? Shucks. It's the Aptasia. <laughs> Evidently I didn't kill it yesterday. Uh. Can you see right here? Right here? It's the shortest update of today's video. Bio pellets. Two weeks up and running. We had a cup. 
Now we have a half a cup. I just tested nitrates two weeks ago. We were at 25 parts per million. And I just tested nitrates yesterday. It's 25 parts per million. No change. We'll check back next week. Next quick update, cyano, cyano, how are we doing on cyano? Take a peek, and I'll tell you what I did. Pretty good there. You can see right back here, this is where there's no flow, and that's where it is, and then there's some cyano coming all the way around, all the way around, but overall, it's a lot better. I ran out of stability, so I've been dosing Microbacter 7 every single day, but I think the thing that's really improved is I just turned my flow up all the way. And the only reason I could do that was because I used to have this bubble coral. Check it out. This bubble coral right there, right there, used to be over there, and it hated it there. It hated it there because there was too much flow. So last week, I finally removed it and I was able to turn the flow up on the MP10 all the way. And you can see here, the flow goes like this, like that. And over here where there's high flow, there's no problem. And here's where the cyano is living. So I'm gonna keep the flow on high for now, keep on dosing the Microbacter 7 manual removal, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So Mac, Hey, one sec, one sec, wait. So MacSpec sent me a light. This one right here, this is a MacSpec Razor. Works great for that tank. Remember I had it on the anemone tank, but I took it off because I didn't know if the light was the issue, but I ended up putting the AI Primes over here. So they sent me this light, the jump light. Have you guys heard about it? It's been out for a little while now, and this is their, their attempt at a less expensive light. For example, this light here retails, as last I checked at Marine Depot, for around $230 and it comes with a mount and Wi-Fi controllability. Then you have the Hydra 32 right here, which I'm gonna be using on the new mixed reef tank that's coming. This retails for somewhere around 400 with a mount. And then you got AI Prime, and these are retailing for 209, but then you gotta spend 25 on a mount. So I'm really interested in looking at how does the spread look? How is the mount? How does it do in terms of par? This one right here has 16 LEDs, right? That's why it's called the Prime 16, 16 LEDs. But this one right here, Hydra, guess how many? 32, 32 LEDs. This one has 4, 8, 12, 20, 24 LEDs. So it's in between these two in regards to how many LEDs it has. Wattage wise is 65 watts and the Prime is 60 watts. So I'm assuming that it's gonna be a larger fixture that puts out overall par wise a little bit more than the Prime, but less than the Hydra. This isn't some like long-term test. I wanna see what it looks like, I wanna see how it feels, I wanna see how the app works, and then I wanna use my PAR meter and test the PAR to see if this is a good viable option in a mixed reef tank. By the way, thank you, MaxSpec. They're not paying me to say any of this. They didn't tell me what to say, but they did send me this light for free. Take that for what it's worth. I really just wanna to get to the heart of it. Oh yeah, interesting. Ugh. So it comes with four LEDs in each one of these. Four LEDs for a total of 24. Down here, feels like rubber. Huge fan. This side is metal. It's got a couple buttons on the back here and then the fan here moves. See that? But let's let's compare sizes. I'm, I'm curious because obviously it's way smaller than the Prime. Huge fan, huge fan. But let's look at the sizes, right? They are very similar size. I mean, what, an extra extra inch on this one? But the layout's totally different. 16 lights, 16 lights, 12, 12. What, with a mounting arm, somewhere close to $400. With a mounting arm, $230. But I bet you this is gonna put out way more par. inches off the water line, 12, 13, 24 inches from light to bottom, and it's still getting 100 to 150 in the corners. If you want to do just white, you can't. Royal blue 
and white are controlled by the same dial. And then another interesting thing is there are not separate red, is that yellow? Warm white, red, warm white, and green, but they're all contained within the same LED chip so it just changes the color of that one chip. The only downside is not being able to control your royal blue and your white separately, although it's a pretty decent color anyways. It would just be nice to be able to control that separately. And why they didn't do that is kind of curious. Biggest pet peeve is how it mounts. The screws go into this side here, and look, it's in the water. I mean, everything's plastic. That's a little annoying. You probably could turn it around and have it the other way as well, but this is how it tells you to set it up. I mean, this light's legit. I'm not trying to do some sort of like big review or try to sell it. I just wanted to try it out, see what it looked like. I mean, it was the perfect size for that 24 gallon tank. Now, I could have put it on like a 40 gallon breeder size, and especially depending on how you aquascaped it. I can't say anything about, about its spectrum. I can't say anything about its coral growth. This isn't the prettiest of mounting options I've seen. It connected to the app on the first try. It was easy to control. You can share your schedules with a QR code between friends. Compare this to like your Radeons, what is a half, half the cost. The Max Spec Jump, I think it's called, you can buy it at Marine Depot. It's a cool light and I'll put a link directly below if you wanna check it out yourself. There aren't any reviews at Marine Depot yet, so if you've used this light, could you put a comment down below and tell me what your experience has been? So I would love to hear some of your comments about what you think with some longer term usage. Have you seen good coral growth? Any sort of glitches with the app, stuff like that. Let me know, put a comment down below. The green bubble tip has been in this tank now for know, a couple weeks and been getting daily water changes and daily antibiotic treatment. And it actually looks good. I know you probably can't tell that it looks good. It looks really good. Its tentacles are coming back, its mouth is tight. So I think it's done its trick and I'm ready to move it back over here. But I'm gonna make sure I put it in like a low corner down here, just so it doesn't get too much light right away. I need to completely clean this tank out, sterilize it because I have something coming very, very shortly. I don't know what to tell you guys, other than it's still an ongoing experiment. And look in here, look look what I have. Can you see that one? That one is the latest victim. The latest victim, not the only victim, mind you. I had to move a clownfish over here. That was number nine, because he was completely white. I didn't know this about clownfish, but if they are stressed, they basically turn pale. And it's really quite shocking how pale they get. He didn't look orange at all. He's in here now with the true percula, happy as a clam. So then I was like, okay, everything's gonna settle in. Everything's gonna get better in here. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. All that happened is they chose their next victim. So there were eight and the next victim just happened to be this one. No idea why, no idea why. Same thing turned super dull looking. So I was able to catch him today. I have two clownfish over here. I got two clownfish over here and I have two clownfish in here. The only place you can go is the anemone quarantine tank. If you can just leave it right there. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, this is the world's tiniest package. Look at this. There are 
13. Anemones in here. It's supposed to arrive by noon. It is now 5 p.m. All right, let's get these going, huh? Here, I'm gonna keep them in quarantine for about a week unless they need some medications. I already have the lights tuned in pretty well so that the par at the bottom of the basket is around 150 max, but I think I think I wanna acclimate them just to make it a little better. So we're just gonna do like a a seven day acclimation. And I think going down to, we're gonna go seven day acclimation starting at 25%. And I think that'll help a lot. being honest with you guys. I bought these online from a buddy of mine and we did not expect them to be this small. Just for your frame of reference, this is seven inches all the way across and this is 11 anemones. And I'll show some B-roll being slightly better, but I would say the biggest anemone here is maybe two inches and the smallest one is under a half an inch. And this just isn't gonna work for my clownfish harem tank. I need larger nems, you know? I mean, I expected them to be a range of sizes from two to five inches, not from two inches to a half an inch. So I'm disappointed, uh, definitely disappointed. I'm gonna put them all in here after about a week of quarantine, and I'm gonna put them all into the harem tank, but I'm just gonna put them all together, like in one spot to see if maybe they'll group together. But I can't move some of them. You can't even see them. Some of them are so small, under a half inch, like four of them, that if I move them in there, you know, there's just a chance they'll get totally beat up. Yeah, it was a disappointing day getting all these yesterday. They're pretty, don't get me wrong. Super healthy, packed really, really well. But next time around, I talked with the owner of the company. We're gonna make sure we get the sizes beforehand and then get some bigger ones. I may end up having to go to eBay and I noticed I could get some larger rose bubble tips, like three to five inches for a couple hundred dollars or less. So I might end up having to go do that because the real issue is I need the anemones to stop the aggression. That's the problem. That's why I was like, oh my gosh, I need the anemones because over here, there's another fish over here and I've had to move two fishes over here and I've had to move another clownfish over here and now there's only seven left and they're not picking on anybody right now, which is fantastic, but I don't know how long it's gonna last. And as they get bigger, I think I just need to have this covered with anemones. And yeah, while it's a good idea to wait for them to grow, I need some bigger ones in different parts of the tank so that the aggression can stop. That's about it though for the anemones. Stay tuned. I will probably move these over in a week. They seem super healthy, which is awesome. No antibiotic treatment in here. And the hope is that I will be able to move this clownfish back over here once it gets stocked with anemones. So if you guys know of any good anemone sources where I could pick up five to 10 large anemones, I'm talking three to five inches, three inches minimum, please put a comment down below. That'd be really helpful.